I need to share something that has been weighing on my mind. As a huge fan of Attack on Titan, I believe one of the reasons it's so compelling is the intense battle scenes. Every battle between Parody and Marley has felt climactic, with lives hanging in the balance and the constant threat of death. Today I want to discuss a particular combat sequence, the second half of Season 3, also known as the battle to retake Walmaria. During this battle, Aaron had grown significantly stronger, and with the strategic minds of the Survey Corps leading the charge, the scouts were confident. However, Marley unleashed their trump card, the Beast Titan. This formidable Titan shifter could control pure Titans and hurl rocks like artillery shells, swiftly trapping and overpowering the scouts. On the other side of the wall, Bertolt and Reiner pose a formidable threat. The remaining scouts were running out of options. It seems like Reiner just won't go down. How did the fight reach such a dire situation for the scouts despite their valiant efforts? What if I told you that earlier in this battle, the scouts won? It may not seem likely, but let me take you back to when the scouts first arrived at Shiganjina. At that moment, while Marley lay in wait, Armin figures out their presence within the walls. This revelation disrupts Marley's plan, which hinged on the scouts unwittingly falling into their trap. Armin's insight foiled their strategy, setting the stage for the upcoming confrontation with Reiner inside the wall. To fully understand the context, let's go over Marley's plan for this battle. Their best case scenario involved the scouts approaching from the north and moving in formation while Aaron seals the outer gate. Over time, Marley would remain hidden until Aaron transforms again, sealing the inner gate. Zeke would then surround the scouts' horses and eliminate them while Reiner engages in a showdown with a weakened Aaron, aiming to capture him and secure victory. If the scouts prove too formidable, Zeke could always use Bertolt to block their escape routes by foot or ODM gear. Marley could have executed this plan with just Zeke and Bertolt if they didn't need a smaller titan to kill Aaron. The primary objective of this battle was to capture the founding titan, Aaron Jaeger. However, it seems odd that this crucial task was assigned to Reiner. Considering his previous struggles as a titan shifter, especially considering what we learned in season 4, Reiner had already lost in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Aaron, and even if the plan called for Reiner to confront him in a weaker state, he still has to face all of the remaining scouts. Returning to the encounter, the scouts sealed the outer gate while Marley awaits their opportunity. Armin wises up and figures out that one of them must be hiding in the walls, so they then find Reiner early, throwing off the whole plan. The first instance of bullshit is here, when Levi fucking dive bombs his sword through Reiner's neck and chest. If Levi didn't hit his heart, he at least cut his spinal cord, before dropping to the ground, falling like... a, a lot of feet? Uh, I don't know how many feet, but a, a death amount? And then somehow Reiner lives that and transforms. Meanwhile, Zeke swiftly adapts and initiates his part of the plan ahead of schedule. Noticing that the hole in the wall is not blocked, he deduces that Reiner, not Aaron, transformed, and he takes action to seal the hole himself, preventing the escape of the scouts. Zeke's strategy proves effective, exploiting the element of surprise. However, Zeke remains unaware that Reiner should already be dead. After Reiner climbs up the wall, they explain his miraculous survival by saying that Reiner was able to transfer his consciousness into his body so that he didn't die instantly. They even have an informative x-ray diagram, where they conveniently forgot to animate the fact that there was also a sword going through his chest, in his body, where his consciousness was. The scouts respond by attempting to defend their horses, using Aaron as bait to lure Reiner back into the walls and engage in combat. As expected, Reiner suffers a severe ass beating and is ultimately blown apart by Thunder Spears, sustaining 19 direct hits to his nape. It's crucial to note that a single point-blank strike with a Thunder Spear nearly killed Zeke and Levi, two of the most resilient characters in the show. We get to see Reiner with no head. So no head? Just look at him. He's not even really in his Titan anymore, but he's still able to signal to Bertolt before he gets finished off. Hey, yo! Astonishingly, he still possesses enough strength to lie on his back and survive the Colossal Titan's blast. And just to rub salt in the wound, after Reiner is defeated again and launched out of his Titan and turned into a little nugget man, he is saved last second by some cart Titan bullshit. By somehow knowing exactly where to find Reiner and then sprinting straight to him and still somehow being sneaky enough to get past Hanji and Jean, who just got the order to kill Reiner. Connie was also on lookout and somehow saw nothing. I understand that as I delve deeper into the details of Attack on Titan, it may appear that I don't love the show. That couldn't be further from the truth. 
My frustration stems from the fact that the show is exponentially close to perfect, making even the slightest flaws stand out. I hold Attack on Titan to a higher standard, and I believe there's an alternative approach Isayama could have taken to maintain the same impact while reducing the instances of unrealistic plot twists, particularly regarding Reiner's survival. In his initial encounter, instead of being stabbed in the neck and chest by Levi, Reiner could have transformed immediately while still airborne. He never needed to fight Levi, and while it was cathartic in the moment, knowing that Reiner escaped his confrontation with Levi, unscathed, diminishes the satisfaction. Additionally, to explain his survival after having his head blown off, Reiner could have encased himself in a crystal, utilizing the hardening ability like Annie did to withstand the Thunder Spears. We have witnessed Reiner's hardening before, and witnessing him push himself to his limits with this power would have been a smart way to change the situation without pulling some new Titan ability out of nowhere. This alteration would still allow for the Cart Titan's bullshit, as Reiner could have remained in his crystal form in a location accessible to the Cart Titan. The scouts could have then split their efforts between chasing the Cart Titan and defeating Bertolt, ultimately failing to capture the Cart Titan. I guess the whole reason I made this video is to explain that Reiner can transfer his consciousness into his balls, and I think that's pretty dumb.